us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the turbans of Mamre, as he sat in the entrance of his tent, while the day was growing hot. Looking up, Abraham saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to greet them, and bowing to the ground, he said, Sir, if I may ask you this favor, please do not go on past your servant. Let some water be brought, that you may bathe your feet, and then rest yourselves under the tree. Now that you have come this close to your servant, let me bring you a little food, that you may refresh yourselves, and afterwards you may go on your way. The men replied, Very well, do as you have said. Abraham hastened into the tent and told Sarah, Quick, three measures of fine flour, knead it, and make rolls. He ran to the herd picked out a tender choice tear, and gave it to a servant who quickly prepared it. Then Abraham got some curds and milk, as well as the steer that had been prepared, and said this before three men. And he waited on them under the tree while they ate. They asked Abraham, Where is your wife Sarah? He replied, They're in the tent. One of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah will have then a son. The word of the Lord. Despised. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the church, of which I am a minister in accordance with God's stewardship given to me to bring to completion for you the word of God, the mystery hidden from ages and from generations past. But now it has been manifested to his holy ones, to whom God chose to make known the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. It is Christ in you, the hope for glory. It is he whom we proclaim, admonishing everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. The word of the Lord. entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet listening to him. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a couple different components to the story of Mary and Martha. It's tempting to look at Martha and kind of render judgment on her and say, yeah, Martha got it wrong, right? But the reality is, is that she's not perfect in this particular instance, but there are some things that we can easily miss that Martha does that's actually really important. And so we're going to see in the story, there's actually this balance that has to happen. It has to happen in the church, it has to happen in our individual lives, it needs to happen in your family, in my family, or else we become unbalanced, right? 
The balance is, is that movement of activity and faith working together. And so Mary was not the one who invited or welcomed Jesus into the town or even into their home. Mary didn't have anything to do with it. It was Martha who welcomed Jesus in. So we're going to talk a little bit today about hospitality, but spiritual hospitality, and that's inviting people to come closer to God. As Catholics, if we're really honest, we're pathetic at that. We're, we're never taught how to help shepherd other people out in the world who have no concept really of God in their life. We don't know how to lead them to God. We've never been really taught that. It's almost like, and I, I know this doesn't sound fair and it's not really an accurate analogy, but it's almost like we've been taught to have the Catholic Church be more like a country club where we're very comfortable in our participation and if somebody new joins, great, but we're not taught to be out there, right? Really, it's like our job is actually to help Jesus save the world. So the movement to that, Martha is much more active that way, but she needs balance. She can't do it on her own. It'd be like, it's, it's like those times when we get really anxious about our world and all its problems, and so we want to come up with all the solutions. And we can have a million solutions, and we can work ourselves into the ground, and we still have a world falling apart. We have one Savior, but He asks us to help. I was talking to the St. Vincent de Paul group yesterday on a little retreat, and we were talking about all the different groups in our community who help. And there's a lot of them. Actually, as they were listing them off, I was like, wow, we have a ton of groups really helping people here in Marysville, Marysville and Everett and the surrounding area. But as we started to go look, as we started to look at what they do, we broke it down. Which groups help with material needs, the physical help? All of them. Great. Which groups help with the emotional needs of people? Because we know that you can have somebody who's really struggling with material needs, but that's not the reason they're struggling. So how many groups actually help with emotional needs or mental needs, mental help? A few, very few and very few that feel qualified. And the groups that often have to deal with it the most are not necessarily the ones who have the solution. And then I asked them, of all these groups we've listed, all the community service groups that you can think of in Marysville, how many help with the spiritual needs of the people? How many intentionally bring Jesus into people's lives and help form them and guide them, lead them to virtue and wholeness and mercy and healing. Even when we talked about the churches, it doesn't even seem like they're doing that. Now, part of St. Vincent de Paul's charism is to do that. It is to help with material needs, but all needs. And I have a feeling, and I know you know this, and we all know this, but we don't know what to do always. And that is, how do we actually help people spiritually? Usually when I start talking about this, the first thing that we say is, well, I don't push my faith on others. It's like, okay. But do we try to save? Because that's where Jesus is at. If we're not trying to save our world with God and by God, then we're missing, we're actually missing the whole, the whole solution. We're missing the anecdote, right? I shared this story with you a little while back. Um, it just came to me in a conversation the other day. So during, during World War II, uh, there were two dioceses in Germany at the time that, that had bishops that refused to go along with Nazism. One of them was Archbishop von Galen of the Archdiocese of Munster. And you ask yourself, how did he survive? Because Hitler did not tolerate opposition. 
He was spied on. He was watched by the Gestapo for the entire war. They harassed him. They killed his priests whenever they could. They would arrest them, charge them, kill them. But why didn't they ever kill him? He was one of the few leaders who remained vocal against Nazism throughout the whole war. And it wasn't until the end of the war that they found out that him and this other bishop were at the top of the list to be executed. But it wasn't until Germany had decided that they had won before they would execute them. And so they asked him, well, why? Why did you let him oppose you through the whole war? And he said, because this bishop was one of the only human beings I feared. That was Hitler saying that. Why did he fear him? Because he was a good shepherd. In his diocese, they had an astronomical amount of resistance against Nazism on all levels, in the schools, people at their jobs, even people working for the government, working for Nazism. They found that every step of the way they encountered resistance. And they knew that by and large, it all went back to one person, the shepherd. If we look at our world, and if we ever ask ourselves a question, why would I share my faith? Why would I go out into this world just to be rejected by people, just to have people tell me, you know what, I'm a good person. I don't need Jesus, right? That's what we hear a lot. All we have to do is tell them, go turn on your news. Turn on the news, watch the news every night, and then I'll tell you why we need God. Because without him, we're a mess. Now, this particular archbishop knew that he was probably going to die. Not only because of the Holy Spirit, really, that he didn't. But he refused to go along with the evil. In fact, he actively prepared his people. He taught his people. He inspired his people. He prayed for them. He bled for them. So that they would actively fight the evil in the world. He knew that our faith was not just, it was just about sitting at Jesus' feet, although that's absolutely necessary, but you have to get out in the world and oppose that which it seeks to destroy. Because of that, his people did it. So if we ever ask ourselves, why? Why should I invite people to St. Mary's? Why should I invite people to pray? When somebody's complaining about the world, but I know they don't want God in their life, why should I say to them, you must turn back to God, or else you will never be part of the solution, and the world is going to keep going the direction it's going. Why would we say that? Because our job is to save. To work with Jesus to save. Now, just a little bit to get in the minds and the hearts of people who do struggle with the idea of faith. I know this sounds like a really weird example, but I want you to think for a minute as though we've actually gone a number of weeks without, without that, haven't we? All right. So I want you to imagine for a moment a flock of sheep, right? So we use sheep a lot in our analogies, and Jesus does that. Now, after a while, all the sheep kind of get to know each other, right? They learn their daily routine, but the one who kind of sets that, forms that, protects the flock is the shepherd, right? Now, let's pretend for a moment that we have our flock. Now, have you ever noticed that even when you're in a big group and you don't know everybody, you don't know their names, it's like after a while you begin to recognize everybody. And then when there's a new person, you're like, oh, who is that? I don't know anybody's name, but I know that that person's not normally here, right? So think of a flock of sheep like that. They bring in a whole bunch of new sheep. What happens when we bring in new sheep? They bring in something new with them. But the problem is new sheep often bring in insecurities, they bring in their fears. And I think one of the number one fears for us as people, for all of us, is when we enter into a group and somebody presents 
a plan or a reason to do something like I'm presenting today to save the world, right? The first question the person asks is, can I trust you? And that takes a little while to develop. Although they say, they've done some studies on this, that when a person walks into church, they will decide whether or not they're going to stay in that church within the first five minutes. Now, you think of it, what happens in the first five minutes? We haven't even started Mass yet. But most people have already made a decision whether or not they're going to stay. Right? So, the question is, do I trust do your neighbors trust you? Do they like you? Right? Well, who cares if they like No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but do they trust you? Because when we trust somebody, that's when the heart begins to open up. But we live in a world today, we don't want to make it sound too easy, we live in a world today where people actually really don't trust each other, they don't trust us, and honestly, we probably don't trust them. Because we're part of this culture. And as we watch it sink down farther and farther, we trust less and less. When I watch the news, or, and I hear about something bad that happened in the neighborhood or something around here, you know what my first thought is in terms of safety? Dobermans, right? <laughs> I'm going to get some dogs. I'm going to, then I don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> and then Jesus kind of reels me back in when I'm praying and says, that Dobermans aren't going to go save the world. They may protect your possessions, but they're not going to save anybody. So our mission. Now, if you think of your life in terms of that, we enter back into the gospel, and you can say, all right, Martha invites Jesus in. So we invite him in, obviously, here to our parish. We invite him into our own hearts. But let's invite him into our neighborhoods. Let's invite him to our neighbor. So when you identify, when you see a need, right? This is not judgment. This is not us being judgmental. But when you see a need, when you see somebody struggling, offer Jesus. Offer him God. Say, hey, have you thought about praying about that? Or, hey, can we pray right now? Can we just pray right now together? Just a quick, short prayer. Oh, we as Catholics, we're not used to that, right? But what was Martha doing? She invited Jesus in. Now, if I'm making you nervous, if I'm, and you're saying, okay, I'd love to save the world, sounds great, I have no idea what to do, then let's look at Mary. We sit at Jesus' feet. That's what we do. We sit at his feet. I promise you he will guide you. If you love your neighbor, he will guide you. If you love the person you're talking to, he will guide you. The times I make the biggest mistakes with people is when I've watched them, I've not liked something they were doing, and I went up and I challenged them, but it wasn't Jesus challenging them. It was me. It was my Doberman mentality. It was I wanted to protect, but I didn't necessarily want to protect them. So Jesus goes deeper, right? So he sees, he sees the wandering sheep as one to be brought home. For us to have that in our mind, right? That's our job. If our world goes down the drain, it's our fault. There's no shortage of people helping with material needs. There's some people helping with emotional, mental, but we are starving to death spiritually. And so Martha and Mary, they are our guides. They show us to invite Jesus home, to allow him to be Marysville, to be the home of Mary, right? To be the home of the Holy Family, to allow God to be comfortable here, to be feel welcome here. Now, the things that will happen because of that be really, really beautiful. When I was talking to the, the St. Vincent de Paul group, I talked very briefly about, um, well, I talked about a lot of things, but one of the things I talked about was when we invite people to God or invite God into their lives, 
couple things have to happen, or will happen. One is, they have to be open to Jesus. They have to open their hearts. They have to form a relationship, right? Otherwise, the faith is just a bunch of rules. Have you ever, like, been on the news, watched the news, or even with other people? What does we as Catholics talk about when we talk about the church? We talk about its rules, don't we, right? When two people are arguing about faith, they're usually not arguing about, you know, Jesus really loves you, does he? No, he doesn't. He loves you. No, he loves you. We don't argue about that. We argue about the rules. Okay. I'm not saying that we shouldn't talk about the rules or the faith. But without, without Jesus, without sitting at his feet, we will become anxious and worried about many things. To form that relationship, from that comes the beautiful fruit of virtue comes from that people who want to be honest and to be respectful, to be kind and courageous, and to build up their communities, right? To root out pride and all those things. And so the fundamental invitation is to God, is to Jesus Christ, right? This morning, I had a parishioner come up to me and say, you know, we were in adoration here, so we have the Blessed Sacrament out, so thinking of Mary, right, just sitting at Jesus' feet. Uh, but she said it was a little unnerving because this huge spider came running right out from that second pew over there, not to get you scared or anything, but this huge spider came running out, right? And she's watching the spider, and then I'm kneeling down right there, and she's like, oh, do I kill the spider? And then the spider ran right over, sorry, Brian, but ran over right to you. And then she's like, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know, you know, I don't want. To. And then the spider ran back to me. But then she said, all of a sudden the spider just stopped and just looked at Jesus. I don't know if the spider was looking at Jesus, all right? But Jesus was up here. And she said, the spider was praying. She said, okay, I can't kill it now. <laughs> now, within that little story, you can hear also how we actually a lot of times view our neighbors who don't like what we like, who don't like God, who don't like the Catholic faith. We can see them as a threat. We can see them as a spider. And it's like, okay, do I kill it? Do I just pick it up and take it outside and get rid of it? Right? And so there's, there is that challenge for us first, and that is to not see our neighbor as the spider to be taken out or to be squashed or anything like that. And so a sincere love for our neighbor, and that's going to come only in one way, because with our world, I promise you it would only come in one way, and that's if we first love him. If we first love Jesus, he will help us to love our neighbor uh, in a way where we would want to invite him home. our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, in God that hath made, one substantial with the Father. Through him all we pray, for our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was the current of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and the Lord was the He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, and that rose into the churches. He ascended into heaven. 
discovered the kindness and love of God is revealed in Jesus in our midst let us pray to God who is here the God who listens that the sacred liturgy may enrich the personal prayer of those assembled for worship let us pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. that the leaders of our nation will give glory to God by using their talent to serve us let us pray to the Lord Lord, hear our prayer. That the dying will look to Christ in their sufferings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That, like Mary of Bethany, we will listen to Christ in times of silent reflection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may live forever in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the global challenges we are facing, that we can rediscover the peace of Christ and the renewed love for all human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Ever loving Father, receive our prayers as we rejoice in the mystery of Christ among us who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Number seven, five, two. Sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord the Church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept we pray this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through christ our lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit. lift up your hearts we lift you up the lord. let us give thanks to the lord our god it's right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is a chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you <clears throat> humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit remember Lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Paul our Archbishop and all the clergy Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. We just take a moment just to think of all the people we know that have passed away and to pray for them. And 
and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. we pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And then give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of our Lord's peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. After this Mass, uh, we're having a meeting for our academy. So parents, if you pre-registered your children, or if you haven't yet pre-registered but are interested, we're having a meeting over in the hall. We'll be in the far room of the hall. Um, this Tuesday and Wednesday, there is no Mass, and there are no confessions on Wednesday. I'm going to uh, visit my family for a couple days. Um, our, youth, our next summer youth group activity will be this Thursday at 7 p.m. So this Thursday at 7 p.m. This is, this is for teenagers, okay? And the office is closed today. We do have coffee and donuts in the hall. And thank you for all of your donations. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks. Thanks. Number 403.